Hey there YouTube, welcome to another new Bolt Action Army update and as you can see in front of you I have finally got round to starting my uh, French Army um, this was the first unit I did and it was kind of a tester um, I wanted to try and go for the darker looking uh, French Army uniform um, and with a bit of experimentation, uh, I finally came up with a colour scheme that um, I'm happy with. Um, this is a uh, Warlord 10-man uh, unit, which you get in the basic box set. Although a French infantry section should really be 12 men. Um, but in this particular case, I'm going to keep these guys at 10. Um, the actual makeup of a French infantry unit is uh, a little unique. Um, they not only uh, have a um, a grenade launcher, uh, a VB grenade launcher, uh, grenadier, but they also have um, the rather odd uh, loader to the machine gun, um, which can only be armed with either a pistol or a submachine gun. So in this particular unit, the uh, loader to the machine gun has actually got a pistol. I'll, I'll give you a proper closer look at them when I get around to showing you the proper unit. So, let's uh, start off by going through uh, this particular unit. Uh, a lot of these guys are on a uh, infantry unit that I found in one of my reference books. And I'll try and find the, ex the exact uh, infantry unit. It's the 51st Infantry Regiment. And we'll start with the, uh, the NCO, or the Sergeant. And you can see he's a pretty decent figure. Um, you can see that the uh, the sort of colour that I finally came uh, came up with uh, is uh, is pretty much spot on to what I wanted. Um, you can see he's armed with a uh, rifle again, which is a little unique compared to most other armies units, uh, where you normally get the option to give the NCO a uh, submachine gun, but in this case uh, you can't. You can only uh, have a, a rifle armed uh, NCO. So you can see the. Uh, the intricacies of, of the uh, the French, uh, this uh, multi this sort of leather uh, facing on on uh, some of the pouches. Uh, you can see his uh, rank stripe there, which is a kind of a double yellow chevrons uh, on his uh, arm. And this is a basic sergeant. I've made this guy, and like all my units, uh, I have given him a. Uh, a name and that is the first uh, the first guy you can see that the uh, although I haven't actually painted the number on I have given them the uh, blue uh, line across the uh, top of his uh, coat's uh, collar lapels I'm pretty chuffed with how this guy turned out so that is the sergeant Next up, we will go for the VB uh, grenade launcher guy. Uh, you can see that it's basically uh, a kind of uh, an oversized uh, rifle grenade. Uh, it actually kind of ends up counting as a uh, sort of a light mortar in uh, bolt action. So it's kind of a pretty unique. Um, only the Japanese really have um, something kind of equivalent to him in their basic sort of squads. Uh, he does cost some extra points, but he's uh, it could be pretty useful. So we have the VB uh, grenade launcher guy. Uh, I think VB actually stands for what does it stand for? The Vivien Bessier grenade. So that's uh, the grenade launcher guy. And you can see I've given him his uh, little red uh, grenadier's uh, badge on his arm. Which of course is the, uh, the sort of the smoking grenade. Um, so let's go on to let's do some regular infantry next. So here we have a bog standard uh, rifleman, and of course he has his name. This particular trooper is a soldier second class, which means that he has uh, no markings. On his actual uh, coat, or his long coat. 
and here we have uh, this is actually the cor the corporal I believe um, yes the corporal denoted by a single blue line which in the uh, the colour of his uh, infantry unit and a quite cool posed figure operating the bolt of his rifle. And of course, given a name. Next up, a rather cool kind of advancing pose. You can see the, the entrenching tool on his backpack. And of course, this guy is a sold out second class. Uh, I used a French name generator to uh, name my guys. Here we have another, uh, looks like a second class uh, infantryman, or uh, sold out to second, second class. And of course, familiar name. This guy actually has actually got a uh, French style moustache. And carry on. We've got two more infantry and then the LMG team. So here we have another bog standard infantryman. Like I say, I was uh, I had to do quite a, a, a two or three attempts at sort of trying to nail this colour down. Um, uh, I'll show you the actual paints that I use. Um, the Warlord uh, painting guide uh, recommends that you use uh, this colour here, green-brown, um, which I actually found to be uh, too light. Um, all the sort of picture references that I've got um, kind of show show the uniform being much darker. Um, and although you know it's possible that they did have some some lighter sort of uh, versions around, I, I found this version to be too light. Um, I then experimented with um, olive drab, um, which when I put it on actually turned out to be kind of too dark looking. So in the end, I actually settled on a um, a roughly 50/50 uh, mix of these two colours together, and you kind of end up with a very sort of dark greeny brown, um, which is absolutely perfect. It's it's not quite an exact colour match, but uh, I think in this particular scale it's uh, pretty spot on and uh, I, I do think it looks uh, pretty good. Um, so here we have uh, the last infantryman before we get on to the uh, machine gun team. And uh, this colour for the webbing I used uh, red leather um, but I base coated it with a sort of uh, a reddy brown. Uh, I think I actually used a, a, a Citadel colour um, which was uh, more fang brown I think I used. In fact I definitely used more fang brown as a base colour. And then I went over it with the uh, red leather, and it comes up with a nice uh, uh, sort of compromise between the two colours. Uh, and also, of course, all the sort of red facing on the uh, backpacks and stuff is all done with the uh, the red leather as well. Uh, and then on to the, uh, the rather unique uh, machine gun team here. So we'll start off with the machine gunner, or the LMG gunner. Um, the actual machine gun that the French used... Uh, is a M2429 and uh, actually ended up being such a good good weapon that um, not only did the French retain using it uh, after they um, were uh, you know sort of like uh, after France was uh, sort of liberated um, in their sort of uh, late war units um, where they were using a lot of American gear they they kind of uh, still like went back to this machine gun rather than uh, using the American bar which they found uh, inferior, um, and uh, the, the French army actually ended up using them until um, the sort of early to mid 50s. And of course, the machine gunner has a crossed machine guns uh, tab on his shoulder to denote that he's part of the machine gun team. And yeah, he's a pretty cool figure. This. And finally, the rather unique. Uh, LMG loader, um, which actually uh, is only armed with a pistol in this case. So he is definitely the least armed person in the squad. And he's pretty much uh, useless. I mean, I, I know that the LMG 
loaders are pretty much useless unless they use the machine gun, but if they lost the machine gun, uh, the actual machine gunner, uh, this guy would literally become pretty much useless, um, armed with nothing more than a pistol. But a uh, nice figure, all the same. And that is the first uh, French unit. I'll give you another quick look at them before I swap over to, to uh, what's next. So there you go, the French, my first French infantry section. I was very happy with how they turned out. And like I said, they basically became the base of all the rest of my uh, uh, French infantry. Um, the ones that I've uh, already done and the ones that will be done in the future. Um, next up, we'll go for the second unit of infantry that I did. And these guys are a unit of uh, Senghalese Trailleurs, um, which are basically uh, French colonial troops. And these are kind of modelled on um, one of the units that, uh, well, I'm not 100% sure, but presumably they'd be modelled on one of the units, uh, of, I think, I believe two uh, regiments of uh, Trailleurs uh, actually fought in Europe. Um, and the majority of the rest of them uh, ended up fighting, uh, of course, in in, uh, in Africa and uh, around the, the other French colonies. Um, and this unit is, again, a little bit different in the fact that these guys have actually got a submachine gun armed uh, LMG assistant. And so let's get going. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, sergeant, uh, who in this case is this guy here. Um, when I first uh, did this unit, I kind of forgot that um, the sergeants don't have, uh, can't have submachine guns. So originally, I actually did the uh, the submachine gun guy here as the uh, the sergeant of the unit just by uh, sort of automatic selection, uh, just because every other unit seems to have a submachine gun armed sergeant. Um, so in the end, I had to kind of uh, sort of swap them back round. Uh, so this guy became the sergeant. Uh, quite a nice figure. Uh, sort of looks like he could be assaulting with his rifle or getting or sort of advancing towards a position. Um, he is armed with his. Uh, the Senghalese Trailers were famous for their uh, aggression with their uh, native knives, uh, a little bit like the, the sort of the, the Gurkhas. Although I don't think these guys are quite as tough as Gurkhas, but uh, in a sort of a similar sense, they they uh, are well known for fighting with their uh, their blades. And you can see that these guys are actually equipped with a uh, World War One style uh, haversack. Um, I believe it's the 1915 model. Um, didn't, uh, f uh, like I say, uh, from World War One, and it's uh, got quite a bit of uh, of strapping there. You can see it's got like double strapping on the shoulders, and 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 more underneath the arms, and then it connects to the belt as well. So quite sort of a quite a complicated backpack, I imagine that would be to uh, sort sort of sort your webbing out. But this guy's the sergeant, and I used a Singalese uh, name generator to give them all names. So this guy is called a Matumbe Badru, and he is the sergeant. So that's the sergeant. Go on to some infantry next. Here we have a, a, a second class uh, soldat. Or just a regular infantryman, uh, the lowest rank. And you can see that the trailers have this nice yellow piping on their jackets, and their uh, insignia is uh, a little anchor, which you can not well. I kind of made it look as if there's something there, but you couldn't really uh, paint an actual anchor on it. It's just not enough room, really. But uh, like I say, they they're based on the sort of basic French. Uh, paint scheme that I came up with and uh, again they, they turned out pretty pretty cool and I haven't got a lot of experience in painting uh, sort of African uh, skin tone and I think these guys came out pretty cool I'm quite chuffed with how they came out and you can see that I uh, have actually given these guys eyes um, the reason being that um, because obviously in as a general rule I don't give any of my bot action uh, miniatures eyes in this case, because of the dark skin complexion, um, I found it, you know, quite difficult to sort of like uh, 
um, bring the face out with some expression like like obviously on, on sort of a paler flesh tone you can use various uh, shades to, to sort of uh, shade in the eyes and, and the details of the mouth and the face but with this darker toned skin colour I found it quite difficult to for it not to just look like a sort of a, a plain um, dark face uh, so I thought um, by painting in the eyes it will allow the sort of face to to sort of jump out and uh, give them some uh, some facial expression and I also used like a, a, a quite a, a light tone of uh, brown on the, the, the lips to sort of give them that sort of um, sort of uh, slightly uh, either sort of creamy creamy brown or, or sometimes even sort of fleshy coloured lips um, that you sometimes get on, uh, on on sort of African skin tone and I think overall uh, it came out pretty cool here's another uh, this guy is actually a sold out first class or is he the corporal? he's the corporal Just check out his uh, yeah he's the corporal Subi Tamarat and I thought I'd choose a, a guy with his blade out to be the corporal of this particular unit and again you can see uh, his scabbard there he's got his, bl his blade out which is kind of a sort of a mini machete kind of looks like um, and uh, of course I believe these guys have some kind of special rule uh, when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat I think they're uh, um, they might have, uh, they might be resilient or perhaps even tough fighters. If we just have a quick check in the French rule book, um, they uh, they do have the tough fighters rule. So let's move on. Go for the uh, VB launcher. So here we have the VB launcher, nice, nice different position. And they've given him his grenadier's uh, patch on his arm. You can see that all these guys have their their helmets uh, attached to their sides. Which is kind of a, a cool, uh, cool thing. Uh, although not to say that I wouldn't have uh, minded some of them being in helmets rather than having all of these sort of uh, fezzes on. Uh, but uh, yeah, quite a nice figure. And this guy is a uh, is he a second class. He is a second class. Danzo Azizi. Quite a cool name. And next up. Uh, we go for another knife-bearing uh, infantryman. Got a little bit of uh, junk on his face, this guy. Let me just uh, try and get rid of it. God damn. Sorry about this. There we go. Okay, so there he is. Another knife-bearing trailer and this guy is actually a first-class soldat Changa Wambua another quite cool name again I managed to find a, a Sengalese uh, name generator so quite handy another infantryman uh, with uh, sort of a standard firing pose Cool, so that second class. And the final infantryman. Again, quite a cool pose. These guys are by Wall, by the way. Um, I'm not sure, I'm sure there are probably other companies that, that make them. Um, but at the moment, I'm, I'm only going to have one unit of these guys. But if in the future I decide to, to add another unit, I might see if I can hunt down a different company's uh, uh, miniatures so that. Uh, you get some sort of different different poses. This guy is, of course, sold out uh, first class. And finally, the LMG team. Again, uh, the same old uh, LMG as the standard French army. And we have the gunner. Again, a quite a nice, uh, unique pose. You see he's got some, uh, some big pouches for holding ammo. Uh, in the actual uh, French infantry section, um, they actually, uh, let me just show you, uh, this is one of the books that I use for reference. Um, I do actually highly recommend this book. It's, uh, it's funnily enough, uh, by the same maker as some of my other books, uh, His Historia and Collections, I believe they're like a French uh, publishers. And this is French Army 1940. 
And this particular book is all kind of uh, sort of sketches of, uh, of uh, infantry. But the cool thing uh, about this particular book is that it actually has uh, a shot of a uh, infantry combat grape. And you can see that, uh, so you've got the sergeant and the corporal, and then you've got the LMG gunner and his loader, who of course is uh, pistol armed. And then we actually have uh, two other troopers from the normal infantry regiment um, as designated loaders too. Um, so that, if you think about it, that's actually sort of like a five-man team in support of the LMG. And then we have um, three infantry, four infantry, five infantry, and the VB grenade launcher guy. So quite an interesting uh, infantry unit set up. And we go on to the last guy. Uh, this guy is the loader for this machine gun team. And he is on with a submachine gun. Came out quite cool. Again, and this guy is called, it's a, uh, sold out first class, Bobo Ad Adofo. Okay, and that is the uh, second uh, infantry unit that I did. And two more things to go. Uh, and we'll bring those into shot now. Uh, and they're basically uh, some vehicles. Uh, so let's just get these guys out. We have two vehicles. We have a uh, Panhard um, armoured uh, car, uh, which is kind of a reconnaissance unit. Um, we have an R35 uh, Hotchkiss tank. So we'll start with the tank. Uh, here it is. This is a Warlord model. Um, and I was very happy with how this came out. I kind of based it on the colour scheme that was on the box um, and did a little bit more sort of... Um, I kind of found like the real scheme and uh, sort of slightly modified it to, to match the, uh, the sort of... Um, the actual photograph I found rather than uh, how they painted it on the box and this is a um, funny little tank it's uh, not particularly amazing in any standard um, we'll just uh, zap out the information on it from the old uh, the army book it's, it's actually a sort of a World War One uh, sort of dated tank um, it's actually um, yeah, it's a small tank weighing just over 11 tonnes and the, the one of the sort of uh, minuses about it is that it only had a two-man crew so it literally had a driver and the commander and the commander um, has to basically do everything in, in the turret and come on the tank so you can see that it's kind of um, he's got a lot of roles to, to, to do but, um, and uh, of course uh, it has a low velocity anti-tank gun so it's Basically, a puny, puny little gun. Um, and uh, although later in the war um, it was updated uh, to a 37mm anti tank gun, although uh, basically in, in, in comparison, uh, this tank is pretty much a hunk of junk. Um, but I do love the model, it's a nice little, cute little tank. Um, I love the way it came out. Um, you've got the French flag on the front there. And the French like to call in their tanks uh, after French towns. So this uh, is Alsace. And the commander uh, with his uh, blue and white dotted uh, tanker scarf. And he's sticking out to have a look. Of course a lot of these tanks were captured by the Germans. And a lot of them actually ended up uh, being in Italian hands. So... Uh, in theory, you could uh, basically paint one of these up uh, to be in Italian colours. But, uh, you know, a pretty useless tank, but um, still quite a cool looking little model. And uh, this is actually uh, kind of my second platoon's tank. Um, which is kind of designed to be the sort of, uh, sort of, kind of a support to the main tank, which of course is going to be a Char, Char B1. Uh, the second vehicle we've got uh, is a 
Panard armoured vehicle or armoured car and this came out kind of cool again I, I based its colour scheme on a photo I found um, and slightly modified it the actual green colour that, that it used was, was a little bit lighter um, but I decided to uh, you know start off with dark colour and kind of highlight it up and it's got this uh, very unique sort of just brown and green colour scheme with, with the sort of the borders of the brown camouflage being bordered by black um, and this is quite a cool little armoured car it's got a nice uh, a nice cannon and a coaxial machine gun and uh, it's quite a cool little vehicle it, it came out very very cool and I used some uh, my French transfers on it of course it's kind of it's semi mudded up it's not mega muddy um, so it kind of still looks fairly clean but yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with how that came out. So that is the end of this first French Army update. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will, of course, uh, do another update after I've finished some more units. And uh, quite a short video in comparison. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time. Catch you later.